Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your readings for September 2018, yeah? Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers, but thank you to all the returning subscribers. Uh, your support is everything to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we just recently hit 10,000, and I'm super, super happy. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to all you guys. You are freaking amazeballs, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just a few things. One, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, and the energies are interchangeable, okay? So it could be you that we're talking about. It could be the other person that we're talking about, if we're talking about another person. Um, these aren't necessarily love readings, but love definitely comes out because I am channeling for the Venus sign. Your Venus sign is uh, how you approach love, how your information about that. So if you are looking for information about like, your love life, I would recommend, me personally, I recommend that you always start with your Venus sign. You can find that out um, if you pull you know uh, pull up your birth chart yeah drop your birth chart now about birth charts um, I want to make a little bit of a uh, bit of a suggestion um, this might be a bit of a long intro if people want to leave a timestamp go right ahead um, but I do recommend that you guys listen to the intro at least once especially if you're watching like a bunch of different signs um, just listen to the intro at least once and then like do whatever um, but uh, I recently got into Vedic Astrology, which is uh, also known as Sidereal, I believe. Um, and uh, I did this because my spiritual team, my spiritual guides really pushed it for me to start investigating. And I did so. And I learned that my signs are different. Okay, So I always thought of, uh, I grew up as a Taurus. My sun sign was Taurus. But then when I did the Eastern chart, the Vedic chart, um, sidereal chart, I learned that my son is actually in Aries. And when, <laughs> when I learned about that and, and I really like investigated and I read it and I like felt it out, it, it immediately clicked. Like it felt right. I was like, Oh, Oh man. Because when I started to look back on like how I present myself, how I like how I work in the world and everything like that, um, I am very much an Aries. <laughs> So that makes sense. I still kind of resonate with Taurus, but um, very much in Aries. So then other than that, you know, in, in the Western chart, um, my moon sign was Leo and my rising sign is Venus. I'm sorry, rising sign is Venus. No, my rising sign is Virgo and my Venus is in Aries. But then in the Eastern chart, my moon sign is Cancer, my rising sign is Leo, and then my Venus is in Pisces. And when I looked at all that uh, that stuff too, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. Because when it came to the Western chart, I was like, how am I so intuitive, but I don't have, I barely have any water in my chart. I think in the Western chart, I think I have like one planet in Scorpio. Um, and it might, I think it might be Neptune or something. I don't know. But then when it came to the Eastern chart, there was all the water I was missing, right? So for me personally, things really clicked and I understood, I came to a better understanding of myself. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can watch my videos or any of the videos, whether you, whether you resonate more with Western or Eastern astrology, it really doesn't matter. It's just um, all about how you feel how this connects with you, how it resonates with you, okay? Um, so I'm, I put uh, some links to some websites to, that are, I find are to be really, really great um, in giving you your chart. Um, actually, there's one, there's one that actually will give you both, but I'll give you two, two different options. Um, they're going to be in this description box below, and uh, I encourage you guys to, you know, insert your um, your birth data, your birth information, and check it out. See what comes out, and if you resonate with something, go for it, and then start to watch the videos from that point of view. Like if now, if you all of a sudden you find that things are different when it comes to the Eastern chart, and you want, and you kind of resonate with it already, and you want to watch videos uh, in line with that, I encourage you to do so. You know, it's really all about what you resonate with, how, what you feel about the situation. Yeah. Okay. With that said, um, I'll, a few more things. One, you can find me in New York City at Om Shanti Bookshop. 
every Monday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Om Shanti is located on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in the East Village of Manhattan. So come check me out if you're in the area. I would love to meet you guys in person. Um, the, uh, the link to the website uh, for Om Shanti Bookshop is in the description box below. So you can go to the website, get their phone number, give them a call. If you want to schedule a reading beforehand, you're more than welcome to do so. Or at the same time, walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, and it's a great shop, you know, they've got all kinds of really nice stuff. The crystal selection is fantastic. So if you're into crystals, I recommend coming down and checking us out. We have a lot of great stuff there. Um, you can get some crystals wrapped and put into jewelry for you at the shop. Um, if you do want some crystal wrapping, ask for Martha. She's great at that. Um, what else? Oh, I am available for private readings. Uh, my email address is in the description box below, along with a description of all the readings that I offer, all in the description box. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go down into the description box, look at the options, read through them, see which one might, may work well for you, and then throw shoot me an email. If you don't know which reading would be best for you, go ahead and email me, and we'll chat, and I'll help you decide which one you would like, yeah? Okay, so for the readings this month, um, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, guys. I love it. It's just so pretty. And then I am closing out the readings with Oracle Guidance from my favorite, Oracle of the Unicorns. Yeah, I love unicorns. I personally believe that I am a unicorn, but you know what? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thank you for sticking in to with the with the long intro with me. If you did, if you didn't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You can't even hear this part of the message anyway. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hi, Pisces. Welcome to your reading for the month of September. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best message for Pisces to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of September 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Pisces. How's it going? Okay, so we're in Virgo season right now. Virgo is your opposite, and you might not feel it, be feeling too good. <laughs> um, the Ten of Cups just caught my eye. It's on the bottom of the deck. Um, so, but, you know, universal love is probably on your mind right now, um, and that's a thing. <laughs> that's your thing, really. Um, but I feel like in this... Yeah, look at that. I was just about to say, in this um, in this Virgo season, your your I, your your thoughts might be around how to bring more universal love into your space, if not the world in general. And as I started to say that, my feather fell. So I, I was taking that as confirmation. Pisces, yeah. There's I'm seeing yellow for you now. So you're very action oriented. You might be. Working on organizing some stuff. It could just be your thoughts, again, in relation to things that you want to bring to the world, that you want to manifest in the world. Um, you could be organizing your space. Maybe. I just, maybe. I mean, to the extent that you would organize it. I'm not saying that you're, like, putting every little piece into place, but you might be working on organizing a little bit, right? <laughs> Pisces. Pisces. And then now, now I'm seeing pink. Pink. So there's unconditional love right there. Excellent. One more shuffle for you, Pisces. All right, here we go. And let's cut the deck. All right, overall energy for you, Pisces. Ooh, ooh, we've got the King of Cups in reverse. This very much could be you. You could be connecting with another water sign. I'm picking up heavy cancer energy with this. You could have cancer in your chart. Um, 
There also could be someone around you that you're connecting with that is very emotionally unavailable. Narcissistic, might be even emotionally manipulative, emotionally immature. Hmm. Okay. King of Cups in reverse is coupled with, ha ha, look at that, the star. The star is upright. Okay. Um, we've also got the Hierophant in reverse and the Five of Wands in reverse. Okay. What I'm getting with this is this person, this, this King of Cups here. Now, like I said, this could be you, Pisces. I feel like for the most part it is. But I feel like you're reversed right now because you're going through a ton of healing. Okay, you could be dealing with an Aquarius with the star here. You could also be dealing with a Taurus with the Hierophant. All right. Um, there, I, I just heard a dissolution of a marriage for some of you. And um, you could be healing through that. But also, what I'm getting is you could be well on your way towards being, connect being connected with or you could be energetically or spiritually connecting with someone who could potentially be a life-term partner, a lifelong mate. And with the five of wands in reverse, I really feel like um, you're releasing any sort of resistance towards this. I really feel like you're just going with the flow right now, Pisces, which is good. And especially with that Ten of Cups that popped out, that, that, that um, you know, caught my attention at the bottom of the deck while I was shuffling, I really feel like this is your ultimate goal right now. I really feel like you are getting downloads, for some of you, you're getting downloads from your higher self. You're learning about how to fulfill any sort of wishes that you have, whether that be in a commit, being in a committed relationship, whether that be in finding a lifelong partner to become, to, to engage in marriage, um, or it could be finding a way to fulfill the desire to express universal love. Honestly, I really don't feel like this King of Cups is someone that is, I just, I, I just feel like this King of Cups, whoever this is represented, whoever this is representing, if it's not you, Pisces, it could be someone that's just a little out of reach right now, but you're being guided towards them. Okay. All right. Uh, current set. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> the current set of um, energies for the first half of the month. Uh, first set of that current energies. You, you're start. Oh, I get it. I see. I see. Okay, you've got the magician in reverse, and you've got the page of cups. Again, this is more Pisces energy. This is very much you with this card with the 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 pay, the the fish in the cup here. Okay, but um, what I'm getting with this is manifestation is on hold as you rediscover yourself or as you dream. You're, you could be dreaming up what it is you wish to experience before manifesting it, or instead of manifesting what you truly want, you're just dreaming about it. But I feel like manifesting is being put, being put on hold right now in order to dream about what it is you truly want, in order to, to, to create the vision of what it is you truly want. Okay. Second set of current energies for the first half of the month. We have, okay, the Eight of Swords. So you might be feeling a bit trapped in a mental prison. This is coupled with, ah, the sun. You might be feeling, <laughs> You might be feeling really stuck right now, Pisces. You really might be. Feeling like you'll never get out of this 
state, feeling like you'll never, maybe even feeling like you'll never be able to get out of this like dreaming atmosphere and actually manifest what it is you, you've been dreaming about for so long. But the sun is here to say, no, everything's going to work out just fine. I'm hearing your manifestations are coming into fruition. So it could be that... Um, you're dreaming that you're having these like daydreams as if manifestation isn't happening, but it is. I just don't think you're seeing things clearly around it. It's possibly, it could be for some of you. Current challenge in the first half of the month, you have the Ace of Wands. Passion, desire, potentially moving in a new direction. I heard it also could be potentially moving in a wrong direction. I mean, this is your current challenge. There could be someone, uh, I just heard faithfulness. So there could be someone that sparks some sort of passion and desire within you. But that could be leading you off your path. Because, and it could be because it's something that you desire so much that you might be, I just heard that you might be willing to take the first offer that comes instead of waiting for the right offer. Let's see. The Ace of Wands is coupled with, ooh, the Page of Pentacles in reverse. The current challenge could be feeling this passionate new desire, new start, but... Um, not wanting to send the message, not sending the message. But also, also, this is also re uh, reiterating what I was getting with maybe moving in the wrong direction because this just isn't the right offer to make or accept. Maybe not the right person to accept it from. Okay, potential outcome for the first half of the month. You have, ah, the Ace of Pentacles. So here's an offer, a new start, maybe a, a, an offer of commitment. Uh, Ace of Pentacles is coupled with, ah, the Three of Cups. And I just saw 1044 as I said, as I pulled that, as I was saying that. So this could be union for some. An offer that leads to some sort of celebration. Because the Three of Cups does talk about union in some cases. Now, going back to the current challenge, the current challenge might be either you, Pisces, or someone you're connecting with is desiring to have a new start, passionate new start, but is a feeling like they can't make send this message or make this offer. Someone is stuck up in their head about something and is potentially afraid to make, to, to really let this manifest. And that could very well be this person that is at a distance here with the King of Cups in reverse. But healing is happening surrounding this person or you. All right, for the second half of the month, Pisces, uh, um, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. My brain is like blank right now. <laughs> the second half of the month, upcoming, first set of upcoming energies you have, okay, the emperor in reverse. And that is coupled with, oof, strength in reverse. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, um, ego. Could be a Leo, could be an Aries that you might be dealing with. You could have Leo or Aries in your chart. This also could be the Divine Masculine if we're talking Twin Flames. Um, and I feel like someone might be exhibiting some sort of like childish, egoic behavior, um, overly controlling. But I'm also getting an energy of, of someone not really being confident in themselves. This could be the Divine Masculine in this situation, just not feeling confident in themselves for the second half of the month. 
second set of upcoming energies, we have the Page of Wands. Rediscovering oneself. Inspiration. This is also a messenger. We've got a lot of pages here. There are a lot of messengers here. So I really feel like there's someone that wants to, to communicate something. They just feel like they can't. The Page of Wands is coupled with the Four of Swords. Okay. So someone really is taking some time to redefine themselves, re-identify themselves, to learn about themselves, to do some self-discovery, self-mastery even, to a certain extent. And I really feel like that is connected to this energy here of the king of, um, I'm sorry, the emperor and strength in reverse. I really, this just, more than someone exhibiting some sort of controlling or narcissistic tendencies, this feels more like, um, uh, lack of self-confidence. Okay. For the second half of the month, the upcoming, upcoming challenge is, ooh, look at that, the Ace of Cups. Right under the Ace of Wands, too. That's very interesting. That's coupled with the Eight of Wands in reverse. The current challenge, oh, being blocked. Oh, wow, wanting to send a message of love but feeling like they can't. Overcoming this blockage in communication in order to extend an offer of love. But the Ace of Cups also talks about self-love. Maintaining, your challenge could be maintaining a sense of self-love regardless or in the face of a lack of communication. Not allowing yourself to slip into an energy of self-doubt or self-deprecating whatever because you've been blocked or someone's not communicating with you at all or maybe in the way that you want them to or would like them to, you desire from them. A potential outcome for the second half of the month, we have the Eight of Cups. So someone walking away. Uh, someone going to a distance. Someone leaving something behind. Eight of Cups is coupled with the King of Pentacles in reverse. So it seems that... Hmm, it seems that somebody... Because somebody is doesn't have the strength, the self-confidence to communicate what they truly want, someone else might be moving, walking away from whoever this person is. This could be an earth sign, the king of pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. It could be someone that's just very financially stable, or it could be someone that's just really egotistical, very materialistic. So Pisces, you could be walking away from someone like this. The main thing I'm getting from this right now is that, is the star here. I just heard everything is happening for a reason. And there is a lot of healing that's happening this month. Pisces. A lot. Uh, give me a second, guys. I'm just, um, excuse the silence. I'm just kind of trying to go over and channel and see if there's any other messages coming out here. But I think I covered it pretty well. All right. Very interesting. We've got three pages and three aces. And those pages and aces match up. 
Page of Cups, Page of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Page of Cups, Ace of Cups. Page of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. Page of Wands, Ace of Wands. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's get into the Oracle Guidance from the Unicorns for this month, Pisces. Spirit, please bring forward the best messages for Pisces for this month of September 2018 from uh, the Unicorns in relation to this reading. Thank you so much, Spirit. Best messages for Pisces. There we go. We've got one. Gentleness. This card keeps coming up. And it's so funny. This card has come up for a lot of the different signs. But um, what I wanted to say, which I didn't, and I probably should have, but I'll say it now. Right before I started to pull from the unicorns, I wanted to say, Pisces, don't have you don't have to be at odds with yourself about whatever's going on in your situation. Gentleness says, be kind to yourself and others. Honor your gentleness. Speak words of love. You don't have to be at odds with yourself, Pisces. Okay? All right. So there it is, Pisces. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Much love to you all. And I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of October. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.